What's up everyone? It's Phoenix here. Bring you guys a story. I'm sure you guys have heard by now because I am a little bit late. My uh, cord to my microphone wasn't working. It, it broke. So I get a new one. It took two days to get here. So that's why I would I meant to record this on Saturday or Sunday. And then the the, the the good mic wouldn't work. So I decided to wait before I recorded this. And so we're recording it now. So the story just broke recently. That Batwoman will be the next CW show. Now what does this mean? Who the heck is Batwoman? This is not Barbara Gordon, okay? Barbara Gordon? What the heck? Why? <laughs> this is why I don't do desktop capture. Why are there so many ads on this thing? Um, <laughs> gosh darn it, entertainment. Anyways, um, Barbara Gordon and Batwoman are two completely different characters. And the thing about Batwoman that is most intriguing is that she will be the first non-straight lead character. I mean, yes, there was Sarah Lance, but she doesn't really count per se because she, uh, how do you put it? She's not really, she's not necessarily like the main star of the show, okay? I mean, she works with a whole bunch of people, but that woman is going to be on her own, doing her own thing. Now, what I'm wondering is, are we going to see a Batman? Is there going to be some sort of hint towards Batman? Because Batwoman is a person of her own, okay? She occasionally works with, uh, works with Batman. But she's, for the most part, an entity of her own. She kind of works on her by herself, but she inherits the name Batwoman because she is kind of part of the whole Batman family, um... I know she was recently in uh, the Battle of the Cowl. She was part of that, um, along with like Batwing and what was it called? No, it was called the movie, the Blood of the Bat. I want to say something like that it's one of those animated movie animated movies that that was based around the uh, Battle of the Cowl, um, and she was in that. I think a lot of people are going to be able to get behind, especially the LGBTQ uh, community, is that she is canonically a Jewish lesbian. I mean, it says it right there. She is a lesbian in the comics, and uh, I don't really see why or how CW would change that. I don't think they will. I think they will stick with her story, which they should because it's part of her character. She is known for being lesbian. So it would be odd for them to change that and it would be extremely noticeable if they did. So this is going to be very, very interesting. We already know that Gotham City exists in the CW because it's been hinted so many times, you know. In so many things. You know, there's been so many Easter eggs. But we haven't been confirmed. It hasn't been confirmed. Because, well, if you guys don't know, the CW can't use characters like Batman in their shows. That's why uh, Gotham is based around Gordon, uh, Commissioner Gordon and young Bruce Wayne and not Batman. Batman, because they can't do that. The DCEU has full control over that. Um, so you, 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 I mean, you wouldn't want necessarily to see Batman on the small screen. He's not really going to do, you know, it's not going to be as effective as if he's on the big screen or in an animated series of his own, you know, obviously. Um, 
But this is, I guess, the CW's solution to solve the, you can't use, you know, Batman, so how about, you know, Batwoman. Now, it's interesting that they choose Batwoman over Batgirl. Because Batgirl and Barbara Garneo, she has a whole storyline of her own. But I think they're not doing Batgirl because, again, the DCEU or the, you know, uh, Warner Brothers has already claimed that they were, they already said that they're going to be doing a Batgirl film, and they don't want they really don't want the two you know universes collide you know, merging colliding because then it gets confusing for the people who are just the average moviegoer or the average TV watcher. They won't necessarily understand that well, well why there's so many different you know Supermans and Batmans and. Batgirls, you know, and it's, I'm glad that they're going the Batwoman route instead of the Batgirl route. I love Barbara Gordon, I do. I love Batgirl. But I don't think she's small screen material. I think it's someone like Batwoman who we really don't know much about Batwoman. She's been in a few, um, well, she's been in one animated movie. And I'm not really sure how many comics books she's been in. I've only read one where she's in. Uh, the one with, you know, the Battle of the Cow stuff. I mean, she's involved with, the uh, you know, Batman, basically. Not in that, not in that way, but, you know, involved with the Bat family. I haven't really read her individual comics. I don't know. I'm Obviously, she has some. She has a huge fan base in the comic realm. But I haven't really seen much from her. So I honestly don't know too much about her. Other than, you know, she's a lesbian. And she is part of the sort of Bat family. And she's in Gotham City. I'm a little hesitant because I'm wondering what villains they are going to introduce. Are they going to go the Supergirl route and sort of go the female versions of Batman villains, which basically would mean, I mean, they they, they could not do Harley Quinn or Joker because again the DCU EU already claims in that, and Harley Quinn really isn't a small screen villain. Um, neither is Joker. Um, I'm trying to think. If Supergirl or any of these shows have done, like, major villains. I mean, I think Arrow did Ra's al Ghul at one point. But he, even that was kind of pushing it. I know they did Deathstroke, but that's kind of... That's kind of an easy one to do. He's not really as established in the DCEU. But doing a Harley Quinn would be too risky. I don't think they're going to do a Harley Quinn. I would be interested... And seeing stuff like uh, Dr. Pig, um, Poison Ivy, I think would be a good one. Um, I'm a, I'm a, I mean, there's a huge rogue gallery that hasn't been touched by any live action movie. And I think they should take advantage of that. Batman has a lot of good villains. And they can use some of those people to go against Batwoman. Since they are based in Gotham City, they might as well. Um, I wouldn't go the Penguin route because that's, you know, that's sort of what Gotham's doing. They'd be kind of copying that. And we don't want a copy of Gotham. We want a Batwoman story. I don't really know if Batwoman has her own villains. Uh, I mean, let's just read this. I haven't read this yet. So it says... The CW will host another superhero crossover event this fall, but this time they'll be introducing the character of Batwoman into the fold. Arrow stars Stephen, Stephen Amell shared the big news at the CW's upfront press presentation on Thursday. We're incredibly excited to announce that we'll be doing another crossover event this fall on the CW. And we'll be introducing a new character, Amel said. For the very first time appearing, we'll be fighting alongside Batwoman, which is terrific. The crossover is going to make it is going to make it, it to air in December. I believe I need to leave 
Oh, I need to leave right now and start filming it. Wait a minute, what? Oh, the cross Start filming the crossover. That sentence didn't really make any sense. Batwoman, otherwise known as Kate Kane, is one of the seven, several, I can read, several vigilantes who protect Gotham City. The character first introduced as Kathy, as Kathy Kane in Detective Comics back in 1956 was reimagined for DC Comics New 52 with the character now a Jewish lesbian. We are adding the city of Gotham into the universe, into the airverse. CW boss Mark Pitowitz added, this will be another full throttled action packed event. The introduction of Gotham City in the crossover, the Arrowverse, is following through on something it has been teasing for some time. In the first season of The Flash, there was a newspaper from the year 2024 that featured a headline about Wayne Tech merging with Queen Incorporated Incorporation. Uh, furthermore, the current season of Arrow confirmed that Gotham existed in the show's universe when Oliver Queen name-dropped Bruce Wayne while being questioned about whether he, or not he was the Green Arrow. I haven't watched that season, so thank you for telling me that. <laughs> I haven't been watching Arrow, but that's okay. I mean, they've named they've they've been hinting towards Gotham City for ages. Now we know that Bruce Wayne does exist in Kara's universe. We know that he exists on uh, Earth thirty two. Yeah, thirty two. Um, from the, the Easter eggs that they've had, you know, the whole Gotham City thing, and they've also talked about, you know, her, her cousin working with, <laughs> you know, a guy in a Halloween costume or whatever it was. You know, they've hinted towards Batman or the Bat family several times that it would just make sense to have something from the Bat family to showcase that. Now... I'm sure some of you guys are probably wondering, well, why didn't, if they're doing a Bat Family, why didn't they just do Nightwing? Again, I think it's because, you know, uh, basically Teen Titans is going to be doing that, doing Nightwing. And even though, I think, honestly, I think they want another lead female protagonist that's not just Supergirl. I mean, they have Sarah Lance. But she's she's in a like you know a team up uh, team up show, so it's not really you know a lead protagonist. Batwoman would be a obviously the star of the show and would be the main protagonist that is being focused on. And besides, you know, uh, Nightwing actually kind of has his own set of villains, you know, in Bloodhaven. And they might not want to do Bloodhaven. They would probably want to do Gotham City before they do Bloodhaven. So it just makes sense, I think, for the CW to do something like Batwoman. Especially considering the types of shows they like to do. You know, they've, they've been adding to the, to the roster. I mean, they have Supergirl, you know, the feminist show. They have... Uh, now, uh, Black Lightning, and now they have Batwoman to add to all of the, the diversity, which is great. Um, I'm wondering if at some point in the future, these shows will take over for the, for Arrow, for DC Legends of Tomorrow, because, I mean... They have a lot of shows to write for right now. They are spreading their their writers so thin. Obviously, they're hiring new ones. They are they are hiring new writers, but they're spreading their writers so thin 
that the episodes are dropping in quality and it's noticeable. Not not like the production quality. The production quality is fine, but like the writing sometimes like the seasons just like drag on for way too long, especially the flash. <laughs> I mean I love the flash. Don't get me wrong, I love the flash, but it's been going on for like too long. So like I think you know, if if they're having problems now with the writing I, I'm a little bit hesitant that they're adding another show to the list because now that's we got Supergirl, we've got uh, Arrow, we got DC Legends tomorrow, we've got The Flash, we've got Black Lightning. That's five shows already, and now they're adding a sixth show. Now when I said that they, you know, they should be able to utilize the uh, every single all of the days to have like just like a DC superhero, you know, week. You know, I think that would be cool to do. But I'm worried, a little bit worried about the scheduling. Because, you know, Supergirl had to go on a nine-week hiatus because another show had to finish their season. You know, maybe, it was obviously probably just thing. That was a, a fluke, maybe. Um, they just wanted to finish these shows to get into the next one. But they're going to be running six shows. Six shows, all at the same time, and all having their own storylines, and all having their own schedules. That's a lot of shows to do, especially since they've now moved, they moved Black Lightning to... Let's see, Black Lightning's on Tuesdays, and the Legends is on... Wednesdays? I don't remember anymore. But, like, they're doing two shows a day as well. Um, I'm wondering when they're going to schedule Batwoman. Um, I think it would make sense to have it, like, on a Friday. Friday would be a good name because I don't think there's currently any, like, major competitor on that, st on that day. And Friday would be really great to end the weekend on a bat on a bat family show. Um, I'm excited because there are so many villains that they could use in the in the in Batwoman. Um, whether they use her own villains, um, I don't really know if Batwoman has. I don't really know Batwoman's villains. Let me see. Does she have her own villains, or does she use... She has Anarchy, Bane... Calendar Man. <laughs> that would be funny. Calendar Man. Oh, no. But, like, honestly, they could, they could use Batman's, you know, villains, Rogue Gallery, except for Joker and Hogger Quinn, because... Uh, I, don't, I really don't think they could be able to do that. They would be able to do that. Um... I mean, Jeremy is like one, whatever his name is, Jerome, is one thing on Gotham because he's not really like the Joker Joker. He's like his own sort of Joker. Like he's not like, you know, Mark Hamill. Uh, but honestly, the Joker doesn't really fit in to the small screen stuff. I mean, you very rarely ever see him on the small screen. Um, so that's just, I, don't, I just don't see that happening. I mean, maybe they could have, like, <laughs> it'd be funny to have uh, Mark Hamill sort of, like, guest, guest appear, uh, guest star. Uh, like, guest star in, uh, just in, like, one episode as, like, the trickster and you have, like, Joker jokes. But, um... I think they could do other villains because there are so many rogue gallery villains that have never seen the light of day since the animated series. I would love to see Babe at all. <laughs> that might that might be a weird one to do on a television show, like a live action television show. So maybe not Baby Doll, but like maybe Killer Croc. Uh, there's Mr. Freeze hasn't been touched since you know Batman. And Robin. <laughs> uh, we got, yeah, like I said, Dr. Pig. There's Hugo Strange. 
There's, uh, man, uh, Clayface would be a good one. Um, what other villains are there? Maybe even a Star Sapphire. Probably not Star Sapphire. She, I don't think they're going to do Lanterns on a, on a TV show. Um, but, like, something sort of around, there's a lot, there, was, there are a lot of great villains that could be added to the Arrowverse. And I'd be excited to see that. I'd be excited to see some of those Bat, Bat Family Rogue Gallery members finally getting the light of day. Because they're not going to use Joker. There's no way that they have Joker in a Batwoman show. It wouldn't make any sense. Even Harley Quinn wouldn't make any sense. Because, like I said, they are way too big to be put on the small screen. That would be like that would be like putting Batman on the on on the on the TV show. It it would work. Like it would be cool, but it just wouldn't fit, you know? Like there's certain characters that should always be on the big screen at this point. Um unless it's like an animated show. Animated shows can take can do a whole lot more. You know, I love the animated series so much. But, like, have, like, actors playing, like, like, act, like live action. You know, those are a little bit, like, most of the actors who are good at playing, like, someone like Batman or Joker or Harley Quinn are all in Hollywood. I wouldn't really trust a TV show actor to portray characters like that to that extent let's put it that way i mean jerome jeremy whatever his name is is fine but he's kind of his, again he's kind of his own character he's not really like joker he's more like just a ripoff <laughs> like he's not like it's good but it's not, it's still not like joker i don't know uh, but I would be interested in seeing some of the smaller villains. Like, Batman's got a whole lot of villains that have never seen the live day. And I think it would be interesting. Like, Man Bat. That would be an interesting. Having, or even, <laughs> Woman Bat. <laughs> that'd be a little bit weird. But, like, having Man Bat. Oh, that'd be so cool. I don't think they would do that because there's so much <laughs> CGI. <laughs> but that would be so cool. Like, honestly, Batman has the best villains. And they could use some of those in the Batwoman show. I mean, yeah, they could do Anarchy, I guess. And they could do... Calendar Man. Calendar Man, I think, should be like a one-episode one thing. And it would be hilarious. If they do it right. Anyways, so that's it. That's everything about the Batwoman show. What do you guys want to see? In the Batwoman show. Are you guys excited to see this? It's a brand new show. And do you think there are possibly too many Arrowverse shows now? Like too many CW shows? Do you think they would be able to they'd be able to handle having six shows at the same time? Uh who knows? We'll see. Anyways, love to play your time right for you guys. Are amazing. Peace out and have a good day. I'll catch you guys next time on the Flame TV. Peace out and see you awesome guys. It's been a blast. Thank you guys so much for coming by. see you guys in the future. Peace out and thanks for watching. And you know what? Maybe, maybe, I'm. that's a big maybe, I might actually be willing to do like a reaction video to the pilot episode of Batwoman. Only the pilot episode. I'm not going to go down that path of copyright claims. Uh, but I would be able to do the, I would be able to do the pilot. I think that would be interesting to react to. Anyways, again, if you guys like the video, make sure to hit that like button. If you guys want to see more, hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and all those stuff. Thank you guys again for stopping by. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And peace out, guys. It's been a blast.